Okay, so we'll look at this one here. This one is a filamentous green alga known as Catophora rupestris. Okay, and if we put it into some water, you see how it starts to be very, very finely and delicately brown. Okay, so that is Catophora rupestris. Okay, now sometimes you can confuse it for a different species, such as this one. This one here is green, but you can see it's a lot more flatter, a larger surface area. And if you put it into the water, we we'll see that it will just expand out. So this one here is a foliose alga. So it's much more flat, and it's much more of a sheet form, whereas this form here is strings of cells end on end. This is known as ulva intestinalis, and it's a tube. So it's essentially a flattened front which is grown into a tube to form a tube structure back on itself. Okay, so it's sometimes difficult to see. Okay, so we'll move a bit further on. So we've got this one here, which is known as purple lava or porphyra. This one is purpurea. And this species is also known as lava bread. So it's a delicacy in Wales. Very, very thin foliar sheet. It grows on the high shore of many rocky shores. If you put it into the water, we we'll see that it will just start to expand out a bit. There we go. Porphyra purpurea. Okay, purple lava. Foliar, but it's red algae. It may look dark, it may look red and brown, but it's a red species of seaweed. Okay? So we'll move on. Now this species here, and we can see these white tips on the end of the alga, the right tip here. These right tips are calcified, and this particular species is known as Coralina officinalis. It's a very, very rough, if I rub my fingers on it, it's really rough, very grainy, forming strings of cells end on end to put with bean. At the end here, we can see emergent calcium carbonate sticking out of the alga, and that is a calcifying species. And it uses calcification as an anti-herbivore approach to stop itself from being eaten by other species. And we commonly find it in rock pools around the North Atlantic. Okay, so coming to the bigger ones now. We have this one here, this particular species. And we can see the absence of any air bladders on the axis at all. We can see some receptacles forming and we can see a little bit of pseudo air bladder forming here on the main body of the alga. This, if I hold it up, you can see that it starts to twist a little bit like a spiral. And that's Fucus spiralis. Fucus spiralis. And at the end here, we have receptacles. That's very common fucoid with the receptacles on the end of the alga. Okay? Now moving on, so we've got a slightly less common fucoid but this one is found on the high shore and it's called channel rock is the common name and the reason it's called channel rock is if you stretch to find out we can see these channels being formed in the front that allow water to gather and to move down the alga this is called pervitia canaliculata and at the end here we've got a pseudobladder as well as a receptacle forming as well so this here it's a very, very common high shore brown fucoid, similarly related to fucus spiralis, fucus verticulosis, and so on. But so that's Perfecia cuniculata because of the very, very established permanent central axis, which has got like a U shape to it that allows water to move down it. Okay. This is Chondrus crispus. So Chondrus crispus is a flat red alga, and we can see if I just spread it out, it's very, very flat amongst its axis there. Okay, we can't see any cortication or any kind of channelization on the edges. These holes here are where these small reproductive bodies have been lost. So it's reproductive right now and it's just releasing these small bodies. This is called Chondrus crispus, aka iris moss. Whereas if we look at the closely related species here, this is Mastocarpus delatus. Now sometimes it looks very similar, if not semi-identical to that, but it, we can see here a channelization down the central axis of the alga. 
starting to form a channel and we've got some thick cell structures down the sides here that to help it trap water. We've also got pipping and emerging growth as erect small growth sticking out at the top. That is Mastocarpus delatus and it's very very important that we know the difference between Chondrus crispus and Mastocarpus delatus because in some situations they can appear to be very very similar. So Chondrus crispus flat with no central axis, no cortication, no banding being formed whereas Mastocarpus has lots of the channel and the pipping okay so we can see very very clearly the difference between those two species there okay so put them back in the next one is a green species so this folio species here and this is just a single sheet form. This is known as Overlactuca or sea lettuce. And it's very, very fast growth because light can penetrate very quickly through the body of the agar because it's really thin. So it can grow really, really quickly in some situations. So it's very, very often found in areas where there's lots of nutrients and so on. And it's very similar to Ova intestinalis, except this is the flat version. Intestinalis is a tube form. Okay, so that's a very, very fast growing foliage green alga. So over here we have Astrophyllum medosum. So if I pull out a nice wet piece of Astrophyllum, and you can see here we've got a central axis moving down the alga and we have an air bladder in the middle of the axis. Okay? And then we've got these lateral shoots. These are annual shoots which are growing off the main axis here. We've also got receptacles which are small sex organs that are commonly found on Astrophyllum and they branch off in a small offshoot like so. This species is called Astrophyllum nodosum. The common name is egg rat and it's commonly found on most rocky shores in the mid-shore area. And we can see some grazing marks on here where animals have eaten it away. That's Astrophyllum. So over here we're now on to bucoids again, of which Astrophyllum is of course one of them. This here is serrated rock. So we can see by a very, very clear serrated edge to the alga, a prominent midrib through the middle and an absence of air bladders. This is serrated rock, which is a common low shore algae on rocky shores around Northern Europe and the UK. You can see the presence of some Epifauna, these are spirobid worms growing on the edges of the alga and they're quite prominent in some pieces of it, you can see many, many growing on the edge there. Now that is Fucus serratus, low shore, fucoid algae, commonly very easily distinguishable with the serrated edge of the, of the, of the main blade. Okay? I know so now we're on to another fucoid, and if I hold this one up you see very very clearly these permanent air bladder structures sticking out. And this is Fucus fasciculosus, also known as bladder rat. It's a common brown alga on the rocky shores. We can see reproductive organs on the ends of the particular alga. And this species is bladder rat. So it basically uses air bladders, also known as pneumatocysts, that allow it to remain upright in the water column and undergo gas exchange. Prominent midrib, fairly flat, doesn't really twist as much as Fucus boralis does, and it's much larger than Fucus boralis when you find well grown individuals. So it bladders, the prominent feature of the bladder rack. We have a large kelp that we can see. We've got claw type hold fast at the bottom. We've got a long stipe connected to a large blade and this blade here is where most of the processes go. Now this particular individual is Laminaria digitata and the reason why is because if I hold it up like this you see that the stipe bends quite a lot, it's quite bouncy. Okay? Whereas Laminaria hyperborea, a species that looks somewhat similar, would be like so. Much more erect and strong stipe. This also has an oval stipe. If you see it, it's quite oval in shape. So 
Now this ovus typifies this particular species as Laminaria digitata, a kelp, found in very, very low shore and rocky coast in the UK. My final species is this here, which is Saccharina lotissima, which is another kelp found on rocky shores. We've got a stipe which is fairly erect at the bottom but just flopped quite a lot. But that's really small. Most of it is a elongated blade of some distance in the land. And these ripples on the Saccharina allow turbulent flows to be generated and increase gas exchange of the Argos. Whereas over a smooth surface, gas exchange would be markedly lower. That's it.